Welcome everyone, it's 6.15, uh, January 23rd, and I would like to um, confirm that we posted the agenda in three public places, right, and on the website, and emailed interested parties so we can move forward here. And the first item on the agenda is the minutes from the January 9th meeting, which looked, I didn't find any mistakes in there. They looked plain to me. So I'd move to approve those. A second. All in favor? All right. right. Okay. Yep. And we have some distinguished guests here tonight. And um, we'll, um, I, so we'll juggle around the, um, the, the, um, process here a little bit and go with the biggest crowd in the room. Can we stop for just one second? Yes. Jeff Gephardt has his hand up already and so... Jeff, are, is there something that you need to say at the beginning of the meeting? He's got his hand up. Martha does. He's going to say turn the heat down. He's probably saying... Excuse me, I can't hear anybody or see anybody. How about this? Good now? Um, all it says is town of Rochester. It doesn't show any picture of anybody, but I can hear you. Thank you. How's oh, that? There we go. Yeah. Thank you very much. And now I'll mute myself and, 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 and that's what it was for Jeff too. We're good. Testing, testing, testing. Roger. So far, all you missed was we approved the minutes from the January 9 meeting. Julie. Thank you. All right. And, um, Becky just wanted to make it quick. Say what? Oh, this is for Becky. She yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, it well, three minutes. okay, Becky, go for it. <laughs> I'm the delinquent tax collector in town, and there's a property on Little Hollow, 48 and a half acres. Uh, the owner passed away five years ago, 2018 of February, and I cannot sell that land. And I spoke with Jim Barlow, your town attorney, and uh, asked him, you know, what I can do. And he said that if the select board could agree to um, contract with him or call him, he could set up, because uh, the select board needs to set up an estate, appointed administrator, and then it can be sold. But I can't sell it. I think the fellow died in test date. I just, I can't sell it. So if you would agree to talk with Jim Barlow, we could get this show on the road. Get the, it's $9,000 worth of taxes and interest and penalty at this point, 48 and a half acres Little Hollow. Yeah, we should yep. be able to do it. Yeah, I, I don't see any reason not to give Jim a call and okay. get the will ball rolling. Will you give rolling. him a call or will I give him? Do I give him a call? We will, yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. I'd like to be kept in the loop. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think that was less than three minutes. That was really good. Yeah, really good. Yeah, okay, thank you. You don't have to leave. <laughs> yeah, he does. Right. Thanks, Julie. You're welcome. Okay. Um, good call. Yeah. All right, that was just a warm-up for the West Hill Bridge replacement discussion. I think that's where um, the big crowd in the room is, is here to talk about what what's up. Did you guys have some oh, concerns? Is, or? Um, Brian and Chris both come to talk. Okay. Sorry, I should have said that. So, go for it, Chris, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> We're sort of here to answer any questions that you might have, and then Brian's going to talk about like how, in what role we can support you, which I think we've covered before, yeah. but just so everybody hears it. So, go ahead, Brian. Um, so, our role here. Um, so the. The agreement is directly between the town and Eastern Federal Lands of the Federal Highway Administration. Um, so, in the past, we've been that middleman, where then you would invoice us. So, but this time we were able to work it out. So the agreement's right directly with you. So as construction goes on, you'll invoice them directly. Um, our role is this acts as the the government steward. So we have to just kind of make sure that there's that the steps in that are followed, and the processes and things like that. Because there's certain steps we have, have to take. Um, and reporting and stuff like that, which, which we're doing as, as part of this. Uh, we have to do it uh, three times a year, uh, reporting. Um, and so uh, we, we've checked off everything up to this point. Where I saw I was in the Herald this, this week. Uh, I got advertised for construction uh, sometime in February. Mm -hmm. I think the exact date uh, they were due. Um, so then our role after that is um, so maybe a step back. So the funds are only for 
I want to say it's 80%, um, maybe 90%. I forget the exact number. Then the mat, the town is responsible for the match. Now there's two components in the match that are a few different components, but um, uh, the the big part of the match will be you've also got a grant from Vermont Agency of Transportation, a structures grant to make up because we we're a little we we're a little low on what um, Fed Highway had for funds available. Um, that'll cover all of your match. Um, but then other components are um, we funded the through agreement with you guys funded the, the design with VHB, um, and then the, the the final thing is uh, we can. Our plan all along has been to act as the uh, resident engineer construction inspector for the town. So we would have somebody that would be out on site inspecting one of our engineers would be out there, uh, keeping up with the contractors, submittals, things like that, uh, tracking quantities and, and invoices so that when you guys get an invoice, they can just relay that right to you that, yes, it's accurate and whatnot. Um, uh, sometimes. Um, past projects we've done, you guys have contracted um, that out to other folks, but we can provide that service to you, and that's what we agreed to when we started this was because we weren't sure the VTrans funds were going to come in, so but all right. of our time can be used as that match, so um, uh, which you know, it, you know, it was always a help on that to get, be able to cover some of that. So um, that's our big role. It is your bridge. We can't make decisions. We can't sign anything, but we can we can inspect, document it, and provide that information to you guys. And we do have the temp bridge <laughs> yes. available. Yes, yeah, so that's uh, um, so that is currently being used, but that's another a project that we're building this year. So it's supposed to be out, you know, the first of June. We're anticipating that coming out, and uh, um, and then it would be available to to be used up here. You're still looking at a finishing date, October. Yes, I think yep. that's what was October 15th, I believe, was in the contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. I know it was October, but I wasn't sure of the date. So you can be doing prep work before the 1st of June, before you have that bridge? So, Or do you have to wait till? Uh, it's probably not going to be a lot they can do anyways because of the uh, they can't get the stream, and so that's, that's yeah. really going to be, uh, yeah. that's going to be that July one that's going to really control the start date. Right. That's when the snow actually melts. Right, right. <laughs> right. This year, maybe, yeah. <laughs> now that we have snow. Um, all the money is secured for you. I, at one time, we had a delay because you, you, the money wasn't allocated yet or something for you. You have you have your thumb on all of the funding. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to raise the debt limit again. <laughs> <laughs> That's out of our control. <laughs> <laughs> I can you talk to a different company for that. Uh, I will, though. <laughs> Well, then good. Let's go for it. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Thank you. You got Can questions? I have some questions. Um, so the temporary bridge, what weight is that? Will, will it handle? Yeah. So it, it's um, we use them for our um, uh, for our timber sales, and our, our, so they're they're rated. They're designed for for an HS twenty five, which is ninety thousand pounds. So it'll more than handle it than you guys. So legally, you could bring up there anyway. So. <laughs> like a well truck. Oh yeah. Okay, um, and then the um, final bridge. What is the? Weight? That's the same same weight. It's different. Uh, it's a different design loading, but it's the same same final weight that it'll hold. So it's ninety thousand pounds. It'll it'll carry. So the temporary bridge will be there sometime between sometime in June, maybe. Yep. Okay, and when when will someone know for sure when that will be in? Um, I think the first the first thing is to award the contract, and then the, the 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 contractor will start setting their schedule up. It's probably going to the main the main thing is going to be um, getting the materials, uh, their precast beams. So that's probably going to control their schedules when they can get the precast in. And and I, I just hear that the final bridge expected to be done October fifteenth. That's what the contract has, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know it's in October. I don't know the exact date, but I know it's October. Is there anything that would maybe hold these up and these dates not? Nobody bids on the job. Okay. Call mm -hmm. all your bridge building conference. <laughs> yeah. And did I hear over here that the bids are the 10th of February? 10th of February. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I don't anticipate anything. I mean, um, really those pre, that precast is what's going to control, so that's, um, you know, it's kind of a supply chain thing, but we're really enough in the year where I don't think it's going to hold up anything. Okay. 
And once a temporary bridge is put in place, um, construction equipment would have access. I mean, there's not going to be any issue there. No. Okay. What's I got a question. What's the? Uh, could you explain the alignment of the new bridge? It's not going to take that 90 degree turn. You're going to run it. Um, it's yeah, it's slightly. Um, it, it's it's not a big huge difference. Um, it's very minimal. But yeah, the um, so the end so the the uh, the high end the, the coming down out the hill won't you won't come down at the make it'll be a little easier transition. Um, they they looked at it for like they say a log truck or semi trailers coming down they can make the corner. So you're gonna go more to the east. Uh, that it's yeah. flared more, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that, yeah. a, as I understood it, it's going to be flared a lot more on that end. So that when you come into the turn, you, it's going to be wider on that side so they can make that swing. Yeah. So that's pretty much how that's going to work there. Yeah, the it's going to be pretty much in the same place. The 73 end is right where, it, pretty much where it is right now. But that, on, that, on the far side, it starts to... Start, yeah, starts to flare a little bit and turn to, to get a better run going uphill. What will the rails look like down that bridge? Are they going to be? I don't remember what those were. I think uh, they were just regular rails on that, I believe. I, I think you're right. I don't like what's on the bridge over No, here. I don't think wood. I don't think there would. I thought no, there was steel. No, there's steel. Yeah. 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 We, ha um, we have steel. the line that they need to look at. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't remember what it was. I, yeah. I'm they pretty sure it was. That's steel. the only thing that's. Yeah. Steel. Yeah. I think it's just a standard. Everything w else is precast, yeah. and then the rails are steel. Yeah. 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 No street lights, right? <laughs> <laughs> just a little levity. <laughs> you can have mine right outside my house. <laughs> <laughs> I think the school could use it. <laughs> Will it interfere with our mailboxes down at the bottom? Uh, no. I, if if it does, they'll have to they'll have to temporarily like make access to them or maybe move them without being on the contractor to make sure that there's still access to them. They can't stop that. Similar so. width to what's there now. A little bit wider. Right. It's got to meet current VTRAN standards. Okay. Okay. 22 feet wide, maybe. Sounds about right. So um, the forestry service is um, paying for a good portion of this bridge. Um, I'm assuming that they're going to want to start harvesting up there. Shortly. So we aren't paying for it. We paid for the design. The funds are coming through the Federal Highway Administration, the Eastern okay. Federal Lands, uh, through a flat grant, which is uh, Federal Land Access pro uh, Program. Um, so it's for locally local county roads that are um, that are accessed to federal land. Okay. So is there going to be logging up there once the permanent bridge is put in place? There is planned timber sales. Okay. Up West Hill. Yes. Do we know when that would start? How long it would go for? Well, once they, I don't know when it would start. Um, it, but once it does, our timber sale contracts run. Uh, about five years, so once they're sold, they have five years under contract to get them complete. They can extend out beyond that. There's, um, like this year, we've had a kind of a stop, stop and start season. You know, the contractors can't get in to do the work, so they can ask for an extension of that contract, so we can go out to sometimes seven years. Okay. Um, there are multiple, probably two to three different timber sales that will come down off West Hill Road, down and use that bridge. They probably wouldn't start any sooner than um, 2026, and that's just when they're sold. Um, after they're sold, that contractor, you know, can choose to start right away, or they can choose to, you know, wait a couple years depending on what their work schedule is. But they still have the same that same contract window that they have to work within. Okay. And um, I don't know if this is even an issue, but um, if there were any damage from logging. With the who would be responsible for repairing the road? Yeah, so that's between the the logging contractor and the town. Um, after they're done, they have to check with the town um, to make sure that the road is in an acceptable right. condition. Um, and if it's not, they're responsible to make any repairs. Like if a culvert gets crushed or ruts start to form, they would be responsible to either repair it themselves or reimburse the town yeah. for that repair. Okay. Right. 
Are they going to do any widening in spots? Because I hate to meet a log truck on a couple of places. I, I'm not sure what John has planned there. I know he has a bunch of work that he needs to do up there, ditching and, and replacing some culverts that he's held off from doing. So I would imagine once that he gets access to there, he'll probably put that on the top of his list to do that road. And I'm not sure if he's doing any widening to speak of. I would doubt seriously he would, but I'm sure he's got culverts to replace and ditching to do. I do know that. And regraveling, I'm sure. Our so. timber sale contractors wouldn't be doing any of that type of work to the town road. Okay. Um, they would use it as it exists. They may do, you know, on four service roads, um, they might do some widening, but not on the town road. Unless there was, you know, that would, again, unless that was negotiated between the contractor and the, the town, town right. outside of the timber sale contract itself. How many acres are going to be involved in the sales of the timber? Up, up West Hill? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know off the top of my head. It's in the hundreds of acres. Um, up there, so there's sale. There's sale out West Hill Road, our West Hill Road, FR42. Um, there's sale out Jones Mountain Road, um, that are down, kind of down, and off the end of the road too. If you went to the very end, there are timber cells out there. I don't know the exact acres. I can get you that acreage if you. Will that go up be in the back toward um, Bingo Road and the other side, it will be up on top in there, some of that? Yeah, they're going to go up and then kind of down towards Bingo, into the Bingo Basin. Um, and then there's a new road proposed, new forest service road proposed in there um, to be constructed to haul that timber out that's down there. Because the current road that's, that goes off the end of West Hill Road, like if you go past the last house, there's a road there that you can follow out. It's in fairly bad condition, it's pretty wet. Um, and it would be what we call an adverse skid. So they would be hauling the timber, like trying to get up to that road where they're going to harvest. They'd be hauling it straight up the hill, which tends to cause more resource damage. So the idea is to construct a, a permanent road, maintenance level one. It would be closed when we were done with it. It wouldn't be open to the public after that. Um, and then, yeah, so closed. And then, but it's not an adverse skid. So it would be a truck haul up that road, which is a much better situation from a resource perspective. We have a question from someone on Zoom. Um, Barb, if you'd like to go ahead. She's on mute. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, do you have a chat version where we can add notes to the chat? No. Okay. That's about it for the moment. <laughs> or maybe you can give me a phone. <laughs> uh, could you give me a phone call, please? That's kind of important. Yep. I'll stand from the office, okay? Yep. Yeah. Take two seconds. Okay. Thank you. You want me to go deal with that? Uh, so you can do your notes. Sure. Carry on. Okay. Sorry. I got another question. You got time. What are we here for? <laughs> um. Obviously, there's been some real protests from groups that do not want any trees cut. Um, just be known that I'm all for this whole project. It's good for everything, if you understand how it works. Um, do you feel as though any of these people are capable of filing injunctions and holding this whole project up? Um, not. I mean, anything's possible. Someone right. could file I, I, an injunction and, you know, on, on our current decided timber sales. Once they get sold to a contractor, um, it's, it's more difficult to stop that contract action. But prior to that, they could stop, potentially stop the sale of that. Um, most of the attention by those groups right now is focused on our upcoming integrated resource project, which is the Telephone Gap Integrated Resource Project down in Chittenden. Um, in Killington and Menden in, in that area. Um, that's where their attention is focused, not so much on the current Robinson sales, except using them as an example of this, you know, what, the, what our timber sales look like. Um, we, we might escape that just because we're moving forward. Yeah, yeah. Quickly. 
I mean, but any, anything is possible. You know, they could, they could, someone could sue to stop the sale of future timber sales related to the Robinson Project, but we haven't seen any of that yet. Would that affect our bridge? No, not at all. Okay. Unrelated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Completely un Remember that the bridge, as Brian said, the bridge isn't funded by appropriated forest service dollars and is unrelated to the our management of the national forest. It was a program through fed highways that you could apply to to get separate money. We're just helping in the implementation of that money on the ground. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> Nobody in Zoom, any more questions? No? Oh, no? Everybody looks good. Well, it's been a long time coming, but thank you for all your work and support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. We're Certainly. happy to see it happen as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll look forward to working with you. Yeah. yeah. When we get around. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. All right. And thank you for having right. us. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thank thank you. Enjoy the evening. Okay. Um, so the next agenda item is a discussion about the sheriff services. Are we going to go with the. Um, Windsor County or Addison County? And Pat's been um, digging into this deeply. It seems to me that the interesting thing about the Addison County is, from one thing I read, they were not going to charge us for travel time. Correct. Which is a big difference. Only travel time within the town. Within, you're right, but once they're here. Whereas I believe with the uh, Windsor County Sheriff, we were... 65 cents a mile. Yeah, it was a big chunk of our budget was going to just getting them here and getting them home. Mm -hmm. Just paying them for getting here. Uh, well, both, both sheriffs that we're talking to, Windsor County and Addison County, are uh, sheriff-elects right now. They're not actually... Um, Right. In office, yeah. Right. So they will be by the end, the middle, the end of next week. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have some preliminary numbers from Addison County, and I do have a notation from Windsor County that he would be willing to work within the number that we put into our budget. Mm -hmm. So I would say as soon as they hit the ground. Um, will probably be one of the places they run to first, <laughs> both of them. And um, so we're, we'll be within budget, whichever way we discuss whichever to way go. We go. But we, go. We, we should let them sit at their desk. So we'll table that a little while until yeah, they... Did, we... yeah. I did receive a call from Ryan Palmer, and I know he's working on his budget, so he had called to ask if you had made a decision um, he could work mm -hmm. his budget, so I just wanted to give you that information. Right, and I did get back to him if it was last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did I did get back to him saying, okay. yeah, do, this is our budget. Yep. Um, Go ahead, Martha. Excuse me, I, I can't hear anything Pat is saying. I'm so sorry. Um, did you guys table this till the next meeting or something, or what? Yes, we're tabling a decision on the sheriff service okay. um, until our next meeting, because the sheriffs have not been elected into office yet. Okay, and that does that happen at town meeting, or? Uh, no, they get, they, they. they State. They've been elected. They've been elected. They are elected. Okay. But, but yeah. I thought they had been elected. So you've tabled it basically to like till the next meeting. Should I say that or or what? Yes. Yeah. Oh, all right. Thank you. Sorry to, to interrupt. Yeah. Excuse me. Thank you. Also, Rob um, has his hand up as well. Inaugurated? Did they get it? I just want to just swore, swore reiterate it. that there's a sound problem that I think is coming from the owl's audio. Because uh, sometimes the, the the voice is really clear, sometimes it's not, and it doesn't seem to matter where the thing is pointed. I'm, uh, I'm just pointing it. I'm not having a big complaint. I'm just saying there probably maybe there's a software problem or something, or mechanical. I don't know what it is, but there is a sound problem. Thanks. Mm. Thank so you. you you can hear me all right? Yep, he's nodding. Yes, yeah. Frank. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Yeah. And uh, uh, Pat is almost completely off mic most of the time. Some people in the audience are on and they're not others. It's a very odd thing. I don't, I, I don't know, technically, I don't know what it is, but it makes it really hard to follow well, what's going on. I couldn't on. hear 
Pat talking either. Um, Nancy in the room couldn't hear Pat talking either. So Pat, uh, Pat's got a cold. <laughs> um, but maybe it's uh, worth a uh, call in yeah, to the owl. Yeah, could come in and check out yeah. our owl. Yeah. He you should take our owl to the vet, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you, Rob. Yeah, yeah that's good to get the feedback. We'll get, yes, thank you. We'll All get right. the animal control off. Yeah, we'll look into that. that. <laughs> Okay. So um, next on the agenda is the topic of approving the fiscal year 24 budget and sign the town meeting warning. Now, did you guys get any email? I, I was on the phone with Barb DeHart, who is back in town. I got an email at 5.06 this evening. 5.06 this evening. Yeah, and I had a big time and, to digest. Yeah, not much time to digest, but the... the the gist of the matter is she talked with Nathan and the monies that we had dedicated to the budget from the forest fund a couple years ago never got transferred in and in, in his opinion that is money we could still apply towards next year's budget since it hasn't been used and basically the 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 um, question on the table is um, if we want to skip signing the uh, approving the budget right now and have one more glorious budget meeting to to see if we can't knock it down just a little bit more uh, we, when does the budget have to be signed uh, I have to when do we have to post it <sighs> we've got a it's little gotta time, go, right? it's got to go into the town report the town report's got to go in no later than this Thursday Two days from now. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Forest Service, I know we haven't used it and we haven't, um, but it's always been brought forward from Nathan's fund balance as our beginning balance, that same amount. So, so it has, it been, has been accounted been. for. Mm -hmm. and so that's what I was curious if that is part of mm -hmm. that. It's part of the, well, we brought it down to 80. 80 some thousand when we were at our last meeting yes. and we didn't use it but um, it is part of the fund but it's good that she now has told us oh go ahead Barb you're on yeah well that, that was the question that June and I did have and that's why I raised the question with Nathan about what the what he would allow us to do or what the rules would allow her to do and basically he said that it's okay if it's in the budget and not spent but you're free to go ahead and spend it now so he has pretty much given us the clearance to be able to use that money should we choose to. Um, so, so, the fund so, so if that was already included in the fund balance, then isn't that part of the number that we are already, we've already spent it in the budget then? Well, I, well, I think that's when we raised the question with him is can we still use it? And he said, yes. Yeah. So apparently whether it's in fund balance or not, maybe not be the issue. I mean, he, he's well, obviously aware of what the fund balances are and how we arrive at them. In his... In so his I guess it's a... Well, let me, let me say one th other thing. It's not just as a money by itself that we're talking about, because that would be a smaller amount, but in conjunction with the funds from the revolving loan fund, which have been on the books for quite some time. So the question between the two of them gives us about $16,000, which in effect, in that memo, reduces our would reduce our tax increase down to a smaller number. I'm not sure you're ready to disclose that number, but in reality, it would reduce our tax burden probably, um, I think, significantly. Well, actually, it's, why, it's, it's half of that because it sounds like the, it's already, it's, it's already. The, the first half of that, the forest fund is already in the, the fund balance that we've carried over. So it's, it's wouldn't be, it wouldn't okay, be as it. much as that. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Well, my understanding was that that was authorized in 2021 and is not in, in the 2022 budget. Now, that is why some of these questions, you know, have to be asked and answered <laughs> if one wants to continue to try to reduce the tax burden. Nancy? Um, the Forest Fund was... In the town report for the year for fiscal 21, 
for $7,500. It did not appear, if I can find it, it did not, and then it appeared, yeah, in fiscal 21 it appeared, it did not appear in fiscal 22, nor is it in fiscal 23. So it would seem to me that it does not exist in the general fund if we didn't budget last year for it. Now, I could be very wrong. <laughs> well, I, I guess it goes back to the statement of whether it was budgeted and not spent in one year or the second year, presumably. Um, especially now with two years have gone by, that may not be an issue as it relates to the general fund. And I guess that's kind of a, mm -hmm. where I'm coming from and anywhere where she's coming from. But again, the, the, over, the overall picture is the combination and maybe some other things that perhaps could be found to uh, reduce this um, significant increase in the budget. Or the taxes, however you want to put it. And I know that there's always, you know, we all want to get things done, and I, right. I can't agree with you more on that. Well, now we're well, it's a question of whether or not it's worth uh, anybody's time or effort to put in another meeting to see if there's other things be in addition to this that may um, affect a uh, major increase in the taxes. The revolving report that was check out. If you send it out of here Thursday, it will sit until next week anyway. She won't get on it. And that's that? For timing? or it's okay. No, we're okay on time. Time is okay. We've got plenty of time to warn, you have to, to post the warning February too. 4. So it's a matter of whether you want to take another look at the this. Revol the revolving fund might be worth looking at. And the revolving it. loan fund has got mm like eight thousand dollars in it too so that might be worth <coughs> you want to warn another budget and finance committee meeting and i did send a text off to greg white i don't know if he's in town or not knowing he's, him he's probably on the side of a mountain somewhere out west yeah he's in british columbia british columbia yeah yeah, yeah. um He's I main. doubt that he would be available. We would yeah. also have to have a special select board meeting to approve the budget, correct? But mm -hmm. yes, yeah. every year. year. We could do it right after a budget meeting. Yeah, we could warn mm -hmm. both meetings together, actually. <laughs> We'd have to change the warning if we decide to do the, whatever the outcome of the revolving loan. There might be a question there that would be added to the warning. But that's why you don't want to rush with the warning. Right. Because there, somebody else may come up with something else that should be on there. Mm -hmm. That's why we waited till after the yeah. 18th, 19th. Yeah. Well, if we, if we can fit it in, it's probably worth looking into. I mean, well, I think it should be done. It's, it should be I, done I think maybe, this, maybe Wednesday if I, it's possible. I do think this forest fund is is nothing to talk about. I think it's gone, or it's in the it's in the budget. It's already accounted for in the but not having surplus. been spent. No, it, it's counted for in the surplus. It's not in the fund balance. In the fund, in the fund balance. Fund balance coming forward. Coming forward. Did we use all the general fund last year? No, no. We, no had that's a fund, we have that. We had a fund balance last year too. Yeah, but we used it. Yeah, no. through through the taxes. <clears throat> we put it in and reduced taxes just like we did with this fund balance. <laughs> so, are you guys available Wednesday? This week. It's got to yeah, be this week. Gotta yeah, it's got to be tomorrow. Well, that would I be, can't, be, that would I be, can't be here tomorrow. No, I mean, I got to warn it. I got stuff going on. Because I can't be here Friday either. So. You can at least through Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, so 
3 o'clock? Yep. Tomorrow. Wednesday. 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 I'll email the group. Okay, email the group and, and warn the... So this would be a special meeting? This is not a three-day turnaround? No. Emergency. Yeah. I think it's something... Emergency meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, Barb. Of the... No, I, I, I don't think it's going to be a prolonged situation. I think it's a discussion that maybe between now and Wednesday we can review again this question of being in a fund balance or not fund balance and take it as a package. All right. Wednesday at three it is. No snowstorms. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be one. No, there's gonna be half yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Welcome home. We knew we were missing out on yeah, something right? when you're off off. <laughs> the probably world. the only meeting I've missed in twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, That'll sorry teach about you. Um, <laughs> do we have um, anyone from the library on Zoom? No. No, I don't see anyone in the room here. So, um, and Highway Department, they, we know what they did today. <laughs> yeah. <them. Good. laughs> still doing. Still doing. <laughs> Terry is not on Zoom, I presume. Is Jeff Gephardt? Yes, he is. Hey, Jeff. Yes, I am. Hi, all. <laughs> uh, uh, well, let's see. Um, a little bit of update on the Greenmount Power Resiliency Zone. Um, the contractor GMP hired for that is Norwich Solar. And Jeff Martin, who you may remember from uh, Two Rivers Ottaquichi uh, Regional Council, is now working for Norwich Solar and is the project manager. Um, he says Norwich Solar filed the 45-day notice, a requirement that they have to submit before the Certificate of Public Good application can be sent to the Public Utility Commission. So that 45-day notice was sent uh, on uh, December, filed on December 2nd. Um, once the 45-day period is up, which was January 16th, uh, then they would be they would submit the actual Certificate of Public good application to the Public Utility Commission. Uh, as Jeff says, uh, the, the PUC can be quick or can take forever. Um, their guess is that uh, if the PUC acts uh, fairly quickly, maybe late summer, they would actually be able to start construction. Cool. And... Ooh, Martha, um, Martha, do you have a question for Jeff? Yes, I do. I'm sorry. Starting construction on what? That solar array we've been talking about? or Yeah. Yes, the resiliency zone. Uh, okay, and solar. that's going to get down by the tennis courts? No. Am I right? Uh, nope. The uh, gravel pit uh, adjacent are part of uh, North Hall Farm. Okay, so resiliency zone um, near gravel pit. In North Hollow, would be correct to say. Uh, no, uh, no. <laughs> just uh, just over the yeah, yeah. 73 bridge. Right. Okay, near Gravel Pit, just over 73 bridge. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. It's it's okay. very hard for me to hear everybody tonight, and I'm, I'm I apologize. Thank you. But well, maybe we can no turn problem. the balance down because you guys are plenty loud coming out of the owl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'll That's try okay. To talk no, no, not a problem. We can hear you. <laughs> Okay, um, the next update would be the electric vehicle charger. Um, they still have not received the equipment uh, or any update on its shipping date. There are some breakers and panels that they need uh, yep. for this. Uh, they're telling us that uh, if we want a celebration to uh, bring attention to this and to electric vehicles in general, we should be shooting for uh, a mid-June or a June a date. Um, there had been a little hiccup there for a while. Uh, their engineer told me that they were going to drop back from two DC fast chargers to one. Um, and then they would also have two level two chargers. Uh, I pushed back a little bit on that. I said, why is the change? I mean, given this transformation we need to make, um, and, uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened. I also talked with Kristen, uh, Carlson, I believe, who's the PR person for Green Mountain Power, and I 
mentioned that little issue and, and now uh, they're back to the original plan two dc fast chargers and two level two chargers so good job we need to keep hold them to that uh what else here um the vermont council on rural developments climate economy resilient communities is a renaming of the program that we went through with them this past year um they've awarded uh to several uh, communities uh, this year, as they did in the past. Uh, we were, uh, when we did it, it was just one community because of COVID. Um, Bethel has won uh, a seat uh, in that program. What they wished to do was to discuss an intermunicipal energy coordinator position uh, for Bethel, South Royalton, Randolph, Rochester, and some other local communities. Um, the directive that uh, I have um, from the board is to um, agree to nothing and find out what's going on and bring it back to the board. Uh, so that's what I will be doing. Um, there are towns that have done this kind of thing and um, and in some cases it's worked well. Um, that's, uh, that's a lot of towns for one energy coordinator in, in my mind, but in any case, I will monitor that and inform the board of what's, what they're talking about. And you guys can decide whether it's anything that Rochester is interested in or not. Um, the library, uh, there is a pretty good uh, grant coming from out from the Department of uh, Public Libraries in Vermont. I'm sure there's going to be a great deal of competition for it. Um, I am uh, currently working on uh, the guts of what would be the, the scope of work for that project. Um, the building has uh, lead paint on it and uh, I think that the best thing for us to do is to take the clabbered and the other cladding off of the building, install a membrane on the building that will allow moisture through the wall to the outside, um, create what's called a vented rain screen, and basically have a, uh, a uh, spacing between the, the membrane and the, um, uh, the exterior cladding. And the idea with that is that uh, the cladding wets and dries at roughly the same rate and it doesn't blow the paint off. Um, we've got rot around the windows. I think uh, normally I don't recommend uh, replacing windows, but in the situation where the windows are as bad as they are here, with the, the amount of work we're talking about, um, I think we should we should go big on this project uh, and see if we can get it done, done right, and done right for many, 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 many years into the future. Um, as I finish up on that uh, scope of work, I will share that with the, uh, the board and uh, the library trustees, and we'll see where we go from there. But I'm, I'm, staying, I'm setting it up as two contracts. One is the lead abatement portion of it. Yep do deal with all of that in the demolition side and then a different contract could be same people but uh, because of the the smaller number of lead certified uh, firms out there um, i think we want to have it in a two two stages so uh, one that does require the license and the other one which would be putting things back together um and then finally um with the uh, Kristen's uh, support and help. I have all of the fuel deliveries now, records on that for 2022. And so I'm gonna wrap up uh, the spreadsheet that tracks all of our community energy uses and get that to you. So what, what about the roof on the library? Um, I have not been looking at the roof on the library. Okay. I know that's something that they brought up that's um, also of concern so if the board would like me to take on that as well i i will get i so, can do it so who is um writing the the grant application is that the library trustees <laughs> or are you helping them with that 
Um, I haven't been asked to help with the with any application on the grant other than putting the scope of work together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it'll be the content for for what is to be done to the building, certainly. Yeah. I've also been doing takeoffs on the the um, the three walls that need the work, um, and we'll get material estimates so that we get an idea as to uh, where the how you know what this yeah. might come in at. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be very. Uh, I, I, <laughs> Estimating the labor would be very difficult. I wouldn't have much confidence in my estimate of the labor on the project, but I would feel pretty secure giving you an idea of the uh, the material cost. Yeah. As well as the fact that there probably will be some options here because that first floor cladding is a very unique and likely very expensive uh, cladding to replicate and install. Nancy's got a question. Does historic preservation have to get involved in this? Did you hear that? I don't think so. They have been to um, town and have looked at uh, this with uh, members of the trustees and uh, myself and with Jeanette. Um, there it did not seem like uh, there was a, a ma any major concern about a, a modification there. They weren't too worried about it. More interested in the preservation than the historic part. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks again, Jeff, for um, all your focused energy on this. No problem. Yeah. And my apologies for the, the meetings I've missed here. It's oh, very that's in conflict okay. with uh, my exercise uh, class. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Anybody else have questions for Jeff? Nope. Nope. Uh, we come to the public comment section of the meeting. Is you want to do the grants update? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I keep missing that grants update. All my notes kind of blur that out. It's okay. I don't have any this week. You don't have any. Nope. Okay. We're right. just. All right. It's, okay. This week's been kind of quiet, so. Kind of quiet. Yep. It looks like um, Rob Gardner may have um, public comment. All right. Rob? Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. So uh, I'll make this real brief. As, as you guys know, uh, the select board knows, I, I have some uh, problems with the, with the plan for the high school building. Uh, but what I don't know, and you can guys could sort of put me out of my misery here, have the three of you, has the select board committed to the concept uh, that the feasibility study uh, describes, the community center and the multiple renters and all the rest of that? Are you guys committed to that? Have you decided that that's the plan? Or is there is there some time that we're going to talk about? Absolutely not. No, we have not committed to that. That is a, um, a favored plan by, by some people on the repurposing committee, but um, they are just there really to gather information for us, and that's not, um, we're not, we're not um, signed up for any specific plan. We're just looking to get as much information as possible. About the building. Okay, that's very helpful. So, uh, you know, I'm just a grumpy guy from the south end of town, I, you know, so uh, if, if um, I can complain, and uh, you know, but uh, it seems to me there ought to be a process by which we examine this plan that's in place because I think most people think that's the plan and 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 have a discussion with people who are not necessarily on that committee uh, about the different options and any other information we should get in this kind but but I don't know how to do that and that the committee I don't think wants to do I think the committee ha has done a tremendous amount of work and are all friends of mine and God bless them but if there's going to be other options examined I think there needs to be another forum to do that, but you don't have to decide that tonight. You've already answered my question, which is, uh, it's still an open question to you. So I would just yeah. say this, if there's any way I can help you, I'm happy to help you, but uh, and I'll quit sending you long emails. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be helpful. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. No, thank you. Thank you, yeah. I think one of the um, potential scenarios that we can 
pretty much right off the uh, option list is for for housing. And we did explore that. And we did explore that, and that's um, we got a pretty resounding several times. Yeah, several times a pretty resounding no from uh, multiple different um, directions, and basically any any federal funding funding for any. Um, large redevelopment project. The, the proximity to the floodway is puts that way down on the bottom of any list of any funding sources for that. It's a, so that's really not not a, a likely scenario. Okay, thanks. Um, um, yeah, you're welcome. Is the town paying for the uh, heating of the building again this year? No. No. Okay. Excuse me. Can you hear me or not? Yes, we can hear you, yeah. Robert. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, you know, God bless Robert Gardner for uh, being so uh, aware of what's happening with the school. I uh, just uh, talked with a young gentleman that has started a business not too long ago that you guys approved. His business is growing through the roof. And I think that uh, economic development should be the key ingredient to the use of the school. And uh, a, a major part of it, like if everyone focuses on economic development, it'll create jobs, it'll create economy, it'll create uh, jobs for young kids, and then we, Part of the school could be an art center. Uh, it could be a lot of other things, but I think our, your town, it's not my town, as you guys well know, but the economic development key uh, or, or need, I think should be just a, a very serious focus. It's got great opportunity. It's a, it's a lemon and the town of Rochester can make lemonade. And I truly believe that. So, uh, uh, yeah. you, know, I, you know, again, I'm not on any of these boards, the planning board, the zoning board, the whatever board, but economic development should be the real key. And housing is another thing. I, I truly believe that because there are people living in buses, uh, campers, along Route 100, and uh, housing is definitely a need, and that could be a shared space. So I, I believe my three minutes are just about up. Just about up. We've got another 30 seconds. I, 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 just, I, just, I just hope that whatever transpires at the school, after five, six, seven years of me being involved with the demise of it, something will bloom there and be, make the town happy when they drive by and pay their taxes, their school tax. Yeah. So, listen, uh, okay. everyone have a nice evening. All right. And I wish you all well. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, You're welcome. Yeah. Um, anyone else on Zoom? No. No hands? No. Um, I think that's it. Thank you all for hanging out for the Thank full you. experience. And um, I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.